Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, this time a blue-red deck called Bombs Away as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. We already built a Bombardment deck not too long ago, but this time the focus is really on getting multiple copies of Bombardment in play at the same time, because that's when the fun starts happening. So Bombardment, when it enters the battlefield, we can choose for non-enchantment permanents we don't control and put an aim counter on each of them. This even gets around hexproof for what it's worth, since we're not actually targeting stuff. And then at the beginning of your end step, if two or more permanents you don't control have an aim counter on them, destroy one of those permanents at random. So you will eventually destroy three of the four permanents that had an aim counter, so it's also a very good way to destroy opposing lands. But if we can get multiple copies of Bombardment in play at the same time, we can double up the rate at which we destroy permanents with aim counters. And of course, if we put those aim counters on eight different permanents, we can destroy up to seven of those eight permanents as well over the course of a few turns. So one of the goals of the deck is to get multiple bombardments in play and blow up all the opponent's permanents. So how do we get multiple copies of Bombardment in play at the same time easily? Well, we have four copies of Mermaid in the deck as well, which can come into play as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. So if we already have a Bombardment in play, we can just copy it for three mana with Mermaid and cheaply get an extra copy in play. And the deck has plenty of other enchantments and artifacts that the Mermaid can copy. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out at two mana, where we also have two copies of Blink of an Eye as a nice two mana bounce spell. We can it to draw a card, but the nice synergy with Blink of an Eye is with the Bombardment of course, since we can bounce the Bombardment and potentially place even more aim counters on opposing permanents to blow up even more stuff, and also has a neat synergy with our Saga, which we will get to in a second. Then we also have the full playset of Omen of the Sea, since we do have a bit of enchantment synergy going on in the deck as well, so this gives us some nice card selection for two mana. can also copy it with the Mirror Maid if we don't have anything else to copy to draw some more cards. Of course we have the full playset of Mindstone, since we are trying to ramp into 6 and 7 mana cards, so the ramp that the Mindstone provides is great, and once we no longer need it for mana we can sacrifice it to draw a card, and then we also have the full playset of Treasure Map, which we can tap to Scry to help us dig towards the missing combo pieces, and it will eventually flip into a Treasure Cove and also give us 3 Treasure Tokens, which can help us ramp, and we can also feed to the Treasure Cove to draw us additional cards, and as you'll see in a second we have even more Treasure Synergy in this deck, then at 3 mana, we've already covered Mirror Maid, which can copy a myriad of enchantments and artifacts in the deck. And then 2 copies of Thirst for Meaning, which helps us draw 3 cards, and then we have to discard 2 cards unless we discard an enchantment card. So sometimes we'll end up with a, an enchantment we don't need, so we can just discard that, otherwise maybe discard some lands in the late game that we no longer need. And then at 4 mana, we've got the full playset of Trove of Temptation. So an enchantment that says each opponent must attack you or a planeswalker you control with at least one creature each combat if able. Now that's not actually the most important part of this card, but it does mean that if we eventually get a Kraken token from Kyura Best the Sea God, the opponent will potentially be forced to attack into it with one of their smaller creatures. And then at the beginning of your end step, create a treasure token. So treasure token we can sacrifice to add one mana of any color to our mana pool. So going turn 2 Mindstone, turn 3 Trove of Temptation, lets us play a turn 4 Haphazard Bombardment, and then the Temptation will just keep generating treasures to help us make more mana, and if we ever flip a treasure map into a treasure cove, we can also use all those treasures to draw additional cards. So the Trove is a nice little enchantment in this deck, and we can also potentially copy it with a Mermaid, although usually we want to save it to copy our more impactful enchantments like Bombardment and Akira Basa Sea God. And then we also need some interaction against creature decks, so that's where we have the four copies of Storm's Wrath, which deals four damage to each creature and each Planeswalker. Being able to hit Planeswalkers is also a big deal, since you can potentially finish off a Teferi or a Narset that already minused, so a nice tool for the deck. And then at 6 mana, of course, we've got a Bombardment and topping off our curve. Also, a reason why the deck is called Bombs Away is because we have a powerful bomb in Kira, Best Sea God. A 7 mana saga that on the first chapter creates an 8-8 blue kraken creature token with hexproof, so you get to unleash the kraken. Then on the second chapter, tap all non-land permanents target opponent controls, they don't untap during their controller's next untap step, so you can maybe start swinging in with a kraken. 
and then on the third chapter gain control of target permanent and opponent controls untap it so you can maybe steal a land or a big creature that the opponent has and once you reach the third chapter if you go full control or put a stop on your uh, draw step you can make sure to potentially blink of an eye to bounce the saga after the third trigger is already on the stack, but before the Saga gets sacrificed, so you can potentially get the full value of another Saga once again, if you can bounce it in time with the blink of an eye, so that's another neat synergy in this deck. And then looking at our mana base, we have 25 lands, which is maybe not as much as you would think, but we do have a lot of card selection and ramp as well with the Mind Stone, so we don't need as many lands. So we've got one Castle Ventress, which we can also use to scry in the late game, for Islands, six Mountains, and then a lot of dual lands for Steam Vents, for Sulphur Falls, and the full playset of Temple of Epiphany, since we don't have anything going on on turn one anyways, so playing this tapped and scrying is totally fine. And then two copies of Blast Zone as well, to give us a bit more interaction, and also pretty fitting in the theme of the deck. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. And probably don't need to keep land on top for now. Turn to Mindstone, turn three Trove, just looking for a big finisher. Opponent on some sort of Jeskai, maybe life gain control deck. Alright, four colors. Not a revitalize. We're just gonna start ramping. And a chemistry's inside, sure. Alright, let's uh, play Omen. Don't need more lands. And then I'm probably gonna thirst since I don't think Storm's Wrath is gonna be particularly good in this matchup. So we can easily discard those. Ouch. Cleansing Nova. Yeah, that's pretty effective against us. So we'll uh, cast the Thirsts. Probably discard the Storm's Wraths. And we can still play an Omen end of turn. Double Mirror Mate, so if we find a Bombardment we could be in business, although if they have more Cleansing Novas we're not going to be happy. So I guess for now can play Mindstone and then probably just sacrifice the Omen. Could have also played Mermaid to copy Omen. Not our chemisters. Thirst could be okay. Can always discard a mirror mate to it as well. But of course top tanking bombardment would be even better. I guess we'll keep a thirst. Play a land and pass. And Golos, Tireless Pilgrim, fair enough. So they're playing all five colors, so they can activate Golos. Doesn't look like it. Maybe they've got the green in hand. All right, I guess I just discard Wrath and a land here. Although, let's see, three, six. Yeah, I'm not going to have enough mana to Bombardment and copy it right away. Could also best the Sea Gods. 
Maybe that's better here. Yeah, the chances of hitting Golos are pretty slim. Alright, let's see if we get comboed out somehow. Chromatic Lantern for the green mana for Golos. And we're gonna activate Golos, which finds Liliana, Cleansing Nova, and Bontu. That's rough. Opponent's just gonna plus. So they're not gonna wrath the board here. She's going for Bontu to draw some cards. Alright, so we can kill Liliana, which seems pretty important. And then I could unleash a bunch more Krakens, but I think I would rather Bombardment and then maybe copy Bombardment. I can also blink the Saga next turn before it goes away. And Fountain, and then we'll pass. And we'll see what happens. Not a Liliana. Sure, so that happens. Kaya, sure. <laughs> I'm gonna make you suffer. I've got a bunch of options next turn. I think I'm gonna I probably blink the uh, Kirabasa Sea God after we steal Liliana. And then. If I don't kick it, I can still play Mermaid, but I guess I can only play one Mermaid anyways here. So might as well kick it. Steal Liliana, and then we'll copy the Bombardments. And blow up some lands. Not sure if I'm supposed to play the map here in case of another Cleansing Nova. Upkeep, we can Scry. Nickel Bolas. Pluses. I guess we'll get rid of a land here. I outsmarted you eons ago. Contempt on Liliana. You better watch your back from here on out. And then upkeep still gonna scry. Not a mermaid. All right, I guess we'll try and blow up the world here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 
So all the points permanents have aim counters on them. I guess I'll still go after Nicol Bolas. Alright, opponent's down to 5 mana. Hopefully no Cleansing Nova. That's fine. Nickel Bolas pluses. Could hatch my bats and get rid of one Bombardment. Yeah, it's probably safer here. Killing three permanents per turn is still plenty. Don't think it matters whether I get rid of the Mermaid or the actual Bombardments. Ashok Dream Render, all right, that plus Kaya could be pretty scary. Second, still scry on upkeep with map and play Kirabasa Sea God. Nickel balls down. Opponent reduced to 4 mana. Kaya can't ultimate this turn. So, can maybe try and take her out next turn. Otherwise, they could kill us with the Kaya ultimate here with more than 20 cards in exile. If they play Bonto as a blocker, it gets tapped down by our Saga. I hope you've said your goodbyes already. And it's gonna be a goal loss, fair enough. Well, this has been a pretty wild game. Glad we got to see the quadruple bombardment in action. And Storm's Wrath seems perfect here. Although I guess it's maybe not even all that great since it doesn't kill Kaya by itself. And we definitely need to kill Kaya. And it also doesn't kill the uh, Golos here. So maybe I should have bottomed that actually. So for now I can play a map, scry and maybe draw something with the Mindstone. Trove of Temptation. It's not bad with the Golos and the Kraken, since they'll have to suicide attack with Golos, but I'm probably gonna start attacking with the Kraken. So it's just good with the treasure maps, but we've got plenty of treasures, so... I'll bottom it, and then... Can maybe find a blink of an eye. Twenty-three cards left, so I'm not... too scared of Ashok... Uh, Getting activated once, so I don't think we needed to Storm's Wrath. So, one permanent left with an aim counter on it. We can even activate Golos thanks to our treasures if we decide to steal it with Kyorabas, the Sea God, which is pretty interesting. All right, so what do we steal is an interesting question. It might just be Golos. Could steal a land as well, but I can play another Bombardments. So yeah, let's steal Golos. We'll kill Ashok just in case. And then playing Bombardment refreshes the aim counters, so we'll destroy all the opponent's stuff here. And we'll pass before our opponent concedes. I 
a thing of beauty. And that's why bombardments are so good in multiples. Alright, Point's not giving up yet. I admire their tenacity. And not sure what we're looking for at this point. Can draw our entire deck, but uh, I guess another Sea God's not bad here. And next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. Maybe I should have activated goals instead for the achievement unlocked. Mortify the Sea God. Alright, since your opponent's been so kind, let's see what Golos finds. Alright, just a bunch of lands and a trove. Alright, sweet. Well, a pretty atypical game of Historic, but uh, we got to show off our jank, so pretty satisfying overall. Alright, we're on the play with uh, not a great hand, it's a bit on the slow side, but being on the play makes up for it. Okay, maybe blink to buy some time, get a trove in play, which ramps us into bombardments. Opponent starts with a Leyline of Abundance, okay. So you can expect some mana creatures. Can also blink the ley line if we wanted to. Which could be the play here. Could of course bounce a goose as well. But maybe long term bouncing a ley line is gonna be better. And then we're looking for, I guess, a Storm's Wrath. Still gonna be a turn 3 Nissa. Storm's Wrath doesn't kill Nissa, but deals with all the lands as well. Alright, it's just all the Troves of Temptation instead. So next turn we can bombardment, but uh, might be too late. A ley line here is pretty scary with Nissan play as well. Questing beasts. All right. Well, Storm's Wrath is getting better and better. Take seven. Sadly, just a mountain. So I think we're dead on board here, even if we hit the best card with Bombardment. And I guess we need to go after Nyssa, Questing Beast, and uh, Forests. But yeah, they can just attack with everyone. And that puts us dead on board. Alright, GG's. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. And a Storm's Wrath is probably going to be necessary here. So we've got a turn two treasure map. Turn three we can scry. Up against maybe a blue tempo deck, in which case we're going to have a bad time since they usually have lots of counter spells and we're trying to resolve some pretty expensive spells. But hopefully the Storm's Wrath can bail us out. Now I think I will scry on upkeep here. Although the Blast Zone is pretty nice against the blue tempo deck. And I could keep Treasure Map on top since I can play it, but I think we're looking for one of our big finishers. Another temple's fine. 
Not gonna show them the blast zone yet. And another Storm's Wrath. Yeah, maybe I need to keep another one, but it's uh, not quite a finisher I was looking for. I'll bottom it. Could see an end of turn flash creature. Spectral Sailor. And an opt. So Blast Zone could get both a Sailor and a Storm Tamer here. Terramander, more one drops, you love to see it. So your opponent probably keeping up a counter spell here. So if I scry with the map, I can't play Blast Zone and sacrifice it. So maybe my play for now is just play Blast Zone and kill all the one drops before they get out of hand. Or I could wait another turn. Eh, maybe I'll wait another turn. Blink of an eye, doesn't seem needed. And then for now I'll just play a land and pass. Another Spectral Sailor, alright. The patience on the Blast Zone paid off. Oh boy. Alright, so our opponent undoubtedly has a counter spell in hand here. But uh, can't counter a Blast Zone. And then I guess I'll do it now so they don't get to untap and uh, potentially draw cards with Spectral Sailor. Alright, they're gonna unsummon their own Spectral Sailor to save it. And we'll pass a turn. Alright, Curious Obsession. Bottom draws a card. So if I go for the Storm's Wrath, it probably gets countered. It could also be the conditional counter spell that makes us pay four, the one that's kind of pirate themed, in which case we can play the Storm's Wrath and still pay for it. So I guess we'll start there. Alright, they had nothing, so we'll just pass. Play an Omen end of turn and play our Kira Basta Sea God. And alright, opponent packs it in, blast zone too strong. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Would like to pick up an extra ramp card perhaps, but we can always mind stone and then copy it with Mermaid. So that's probably what we'll do. Turn to Mindstone, turn three, Mermaid copying Mindstone to set up an early bombardment. Up against Steam Vents, hopefully no spell pierce. Just an opt. Opponent on Grixis with a turn two Dreadhorde Butcher. Alright, that's gonna hit pretty hard. But I think we still stick to the plan here. Mermaid, copy Mindstone, and I can even play the treasure map afterwards. And then a turn for bombardments. Thought Erasure, that's too bad. Can take the bombardments. So probably scry an upkeep with the map now to find more action. Blink of an eye is not bad. And then I probably just bounce it now in case they have a counter spell. Could also draw into a temple. And then upkeep scry again with the map. Thought Erasure takes Mermaid. Well, treasure map does help with uh, top decking here. Could even cast a Cure Busta Sea God almost. Yeah, 
Steam vents a draw. So I could sack a Mind Stone. Four, five, six. Yeah, I guess sacking a Mind Stone is probably still worth it. Storm's Wrath can play that. Nicol Bolas, the Ravager, gets her Steam Vents. Flip Treasure Map. And a Trove of Temptation is pretty good with the Treasure Map in play. So I probably gotta keep. And then play Trove. And end of turn, I'm probably gonna sack Mind Stone as well. But don't want to draw the card now in case of discard. Rekindling Phoenix, also definitely a problem since it doesn't die to the Storm's Wrath for good. And flying creatures can get past our Kraken tokens, so yeah, it's not looking good here. Bombardments. So let's see if we can find something better first. Mindstone. So again, a mindstone into bombardments. Targeting the Phoenix doesn't really help. So I'll just go after Nicol Bolas and some lands. But we could be dead here. Croxa. That will deal three as well. Alright, the Thouderacher taking the first bombardment definitely messed up our plan. Otherwise we could have potentially destroyed all their lands before they got to four mana. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and this seems fine. If we find a land here we can have a turn three... Trove of Temptation into maybe a Bombardment. So it's tempting to keep Bombardment here since it gives us something to ramp into. Even though we still need a third land. Can always just play another Mind Stone first. Opponent on the Life Gain deck. I will need this Storm's Wrath before the Prime Mate gets too large here. Although Blast Stone could be good too. So yeah, we'll just play the Trove, which also gives us double red for Storm's Wrath next turn. And hopefully we can still kill the Pride Mates. It's gonna be a Hawk. So yeah, this Pride Mate is gonna get out of range. Or, oh, never mind, just a Donophobe. So that's perfect for the Storm's Wrath. One mana short of playing Bombardment since we missed a land drop. But uh, I guess I can go Mind Stone into... Storm's Wrath here. Set them back. And then next turn we can play Bombardments, blow up all their lands. Alright, Ajani is pretty strong here. So play Bombardments. And then a Johnny gets one, and I guess just a Lance here. Can't blow up the Donophope, and we did get a Johnny. The reason I don't prioritize killing the creature is if we do find another Storm's Wrath or a blink of an eye, we'll end up killing the creature, and then we kind of waste an aim counter from the bombardments. But now I'll go after the creatures and the last lands. And look for maybe a Kirabasa Sea God or a Mirror Maid to copy Bombardment once again. Alright, we are taking a bit of a hit. Put 
opponent gets to draw cards. And another Sarah Ascendant. Alright, let's see if we can draw into a uh, Sweeper here. Can always use a Blast Zone to clean up the Ascendants. Alright, there's a Storm's Wrath. So I'll keep the Mirror Maid. I mean, it's kind of tempting to just play a Mirror Maid here. Maybe I should do that. It's a bit greedy. But it's kind of fun. And then... Alright, so our opponent scoops it up, so end of turn we were gonna get to destroy three permanents. And uh, our opponent would be left with not much afterwards. So, yeah. That's gonna wrap things up for today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.